Hey, this is Keith from Many Eyes. This is Charlie from Many Eyes. And you are hanging out, watching Front Row Live. With Rob. What's up, guys? Rob here, Front Row Live Entertainment. I'm hanging out here with Many Eyes. And I'm so excited about you guys. So far, the three tracks that you guys have released have been incredible. Um, I want to talk about like getting together um, for the very first time and starting to collaborate on music together. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. It seemed pretty, uh, it seemed pretty natural, uh, other than the fact that we were, for some reason, kept out of each other's lives for, you know, 40 some years. And then <laughs> after this long, it's like through a mutual friend, we get introduced and, you know, we kind of, our orbits were kind of next to each other, but we yeah. never actually, you know, crossed paths. So once we got together, um, everything just kind of began flowing for me yeah and i love that you you all had your own projects going on you've been in this industry for some time mm -hmm. have that tour experience as well mm -hmm. but like coming in together for that very first time did you guys feel like it was just natural when you guys started to write together started to record together uh yeah actually hugely um the, f the first time i got a text from him he just said, hey, I'm looking to do this kind of music. And he he gave me like eight different inspirations. And I just kind of laughed and said, I'm pretty sure we're like best friends <laughs> because <laughs> it's exactly what I've always wanted to do. So I'm I'm down. So it was like it was crazy how quick ever like once we yeah. were in the room, how quick everything went. <laughs> how amazing does it feel, though, to kind of start all over again, like with the experience that you've had? You know, all the years that you've you've seen this industry kind of change and move around. And now you get to kind of like promote this band, like starting from scratch. Like, how yeah, does that feel? It's amazing. I mean, it really is like you kind of get to look back not only over all of history, but all of your own history and just sort of pick the things that you love the most, yeah. you know, and then put it all together and, and hopefully create something new. And that's definitely what we're doing, because, you know, even though I don't I've never worked with these guys before, it was like. I trust their experiences. Yeah. I know that they're here because they fought the same battles that I fought. You know, we all have come from the same world. So we all sort of have the same sensibilities. And so I trust them, you know, mm. and it was just that easy. And once you kind of let go and just let the trust happen, then things happen a lot more. Natural. Yeah. Yeah. When it comes to the writing process, uh, been a fan of your music or your songwriting for a very long time. Thank you. So collaborating all together at once in, in this writing session, um, what did you feel that you learned from Keith and what did you feel that you learned from them? Um, I learned from them that uh, it is absolutely possible to have a really catchy chorus next to a really infectious mosh part. You know, those, that was something that I had always I had just always thought that, like, those things are such apples and oranges that you yeah. have to sort of put a bridge between them. And, you know, you have to kind of gradually work up towards one or the other. But you just smash those <laughs> next to each other and you're good. You're good. Yeah, I that's it's 110 percent true. I've always felt like it doesn't matter if the chorus is great. Yeah, you're not going to care if there's a heavy part next to it because you're like, oh, I can't wait for the chorus to come back. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, what I learned from Keith is just like um, like musically to be brave. Um, you know, I would text him and say, oh, I'm, I've got this like kind of weird hip hop beat thing and this bass idea and blah, 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 blah. And then you know, um, all of a sudden we have future proof and yeah. it was just because of that. <laughs> and, um, there's a song that isn't that we're not playing live yet. Um, that I just said, Hey, listen, I have this song. That's like, it's like two and a half minutes of piano. And then it gets really heavy at the end. Nice. Um, can we, can we screw around with that? And he's like, hell yeah, we can screw around with that. And, um, I've sent him all this weird stuff that I tried to do for like film work and stuff. And he's like, I'm going to write lyrics to this. And it just, it's being brave. That's I would yeah. say. I feel like on top of that, it's not just being brave, but it's also like there's no pressure. Like you, right. you're able to do right. whatever you want to do. And I, I'm sure that feels incredible. Yeah. I mean, pressure only happens when there are confines in place. You know, mm -hmm. then things start trying to move that don't want to move. And, yeah. you know, you're you're butting heads with, with the wrong kind of people. And I mean, this way, just to not really have any – and any you know parameters as far as we could tell what our music is is trying to do just allows us you know the opportunity to really get get i don't know more experimental a little yeah. i don't know and more personal because it's now it's like all right we've done the stuff and like i said we can kind of pick what we love that we've done 
And I know that what I love most that I've done isn't necessarily what was the bit biggest, like, you know, mm. most recognized thing, but to take those elements and, and get them back and now, you know, see how it looks through the eyes of somebody who's not only 44 years old and no longer 18, yeah. you know, but sober now. It's, it's just amazing the things that tour has revealed to me. What kind of impact has that had on you? Um, especially like with your live performances. Yeah, it was, it's great. I mean, it really has made me focus on, on singing as a real like craft, you know, yeah. and it feels nice to have a purpose instead of just being on tour. And the only purpose of every day is to try to recover from the party of the night before you know, you're just in, <laughs> in constant hangover mode, you yeah. know, but now it's like, Oh, I'm not hungover. Okay. I can, I can do vocal warm ups earlier. I can, yeah. I can practice, I can read, I can, you know, just do all this, these things to make myself better. It's great. Do you feel that at the same time, like now being sober, it allows you to step out and let us listen to the vocals that we uh, listen yeah. to now? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I, and I think it's going to be a real cool uh, relationship that develops between, you know, people that listen to the band and the lyrics that are written because now they're just, they're so much more honest now. They're coming yeah. from such a different place. Now, when it comes to personal lyrics, um, how do you guys like collaborate together with these lyrics? Do you let do you mainly hit those personal topics or do you guys kind of chime in with those personal topics as well? Because I'm sure you guys have had those same experiences. Yeah, it's it's cool. It's uh, it, like they don't they don't um, really mess with the, the lyrics themselves, but mm. they know like the cadence of a of lyrical placement that yeah. needs to go somewhere. They, they can think like a vocalist, but they let me do my thing which is yeah. great you know because if if i'm stuck or there's an empty spot and they're like well what if it was like a da, 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 you know sort of thing and then okay now I, now i have this this pattern and i just go through my notes and see if i have anything that matches that pattern and there it is it's great how challenging is it going from like doing verses where he's being more melodic to like those verses that he's like getting more heavier how does that change like the instrumentation um it doesn't change anything, honestly. I think you just have to just realize what we are starting from like point zero. Yeah. So it doesn't we're defining what the reality of the band is. So it's just like if we're going to scream in this part, we're going to scream in this part. And if we don't, we don't. And when the like when the more songs come out and the album comes out and blah, 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 blah. People will understand that this is just how we do it and they'll get it, you yeah. know? um that's just how it works as far as i'm concerned yeah and it's cool because i think the more whoa all right <laughs> i think the more <laughs> the more you understand about each um individual life story you know yeah. like what background everyone's coming from what bands they've been in then it's really cool to look at this band and, and things make a lot of sense now you know mm -hmm. and it's the further you dig into our past the more like i said the more that kind of gets revealed about each person and what this band is doing yeah so Jamie's a big part of why all of you guys got together, right? Yeah. And he's also uh, behind the scenes with the production of the music yeah. and this upcoming debut album. What's it like working with Jamie and how does he kind of allow you guys to step out? of? I feel like you guys are stepping out of your comfort zones uh, already just on this project. But mm -hmm. how else does he push you in the studio? He surprisingly, um, we were like he kind of took more of a he kind of played like matchmaker in this. And he just said, listen, I think he, I think you and Keith are a perfect fit. Your songwriting, his stuff, I think it's going to work. And then we did a we did like a week. I think we wrote like three or four songs or four or five songs. And that week he came in like the second day and we had done what I think would be Revelation and Mr. Chord. Mm -hmm. And he walked in and he had heard him. You know, he, he wasn't there for it, but he just walked in and he just said, I'm just going to be hands off for this. Like, wow. I'm, I'm totally happy with what's happening. You guys just go do it. And uh, last year, I also play in the Josta band and we were getting ready for uh, Milwaukee Metal Fest. And I said, hey, by the way, I'm driving up to um, Buffalo next week to write some more songs. Mm. And he's like, how many? And I said, I don't know, maybe one or something. And then I came back and we are flying to Milwaukee when I came back. And he goes, how many do you guys write? And I said, five <laughs> and he goes really and i was like yeah and he goes this is amazing and so just he just he, he just he was happy to just let us go and just be a band yeah yeah it sounds like you guys really needed to just get to know each other and start collaborating together I feel yeah like that was like you know the vessel was just not there exactly and i think that's only you know um becoming more apparent as tour goes on mm. you know it's we play more shows and just get looser and more comfortable with it you know yeah it's a whole experience and it's 
it's it's not happening in any order i remember things happening in with with you know other bands so this is a <laughs> this is a absolutely uh mr toad's wild ride over here i love it <laughs> <laughs> now i love that you started out the first two tracks are pretty heavy um and then you gave us uh this future proof track mm -hmm. that is a little softer we get more of your melodic vocals mm -hmm. on there from your perspective, like, how do you feel the fans are taking in this music that you guys have been releasing? I, I think it's it's like giving them medicine, and I un, and I understand that yeah. some people really need you know a, 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 a velveteen touch when <laughs> being administered medicine because it's not what people might be expecting from me mm -hmm. having a history like mine. Um, but I think that the way that we introduced heavier songs first, you know, and then kind of introduced a little melody so that people understood that like okay this is kind of what it's going to be and a little more a little more and then yeah it, i mean we were saying that like future proof was going to be an absolute curveball but yeah because i think they were kind of getting used to what we were becoming it didn't really come that far out of left field and mm. i think people embraced it which i'm very happy about personally i hope there's more of this singing on, yeah there will be for sure yeah. you have an amazing voice and i'm Thank like you. i'm kind of mad that i'm barely finding this out like i wish <laughs> you would have like teased us with some of that yeah you know, way back i then. thought i was but i guess not <laughs> <laughs> not at not at this level no, so no. <laughs> it's incredible what you guys are doing um Thank you. you mentioned earlier that like you he sent you like ideas of what he wanted to do as far as a band what was it about the sound that you felt like this is what you wanted to pursue for this for this new era of life? Um, it was music. It, it it just had a, a grunge sound. It just reminded me of like '90s alternative yeah. rock, you know. And that that's like hands down one of my favorite categories. And I was you know a kid <laughs> in the '90s. It was the most magical era ever. So all that those ideas of like really driving chords, but these beautiful vocals like Chris Cornell or yeah, you know, Lane Staley, all these. These guys that were just absolutely angelic over these brutal, heavy chords. You know, I, I remember I never heard anything like it in my life and it changed me. So I wanted to be one of those guys, you know. And when I heard the the instrumentation, I was like, okay, it's actually kind of going that way. Yeah. You know, where we just kind of guide it. You know, we don't like grab it by the neck and push it into alternative music. But if we can guide it a little more, yeah. you know, it could start like going that way that really has that nostalgic vibe for a lot of people what about for you same same answer or uh yeah i'd probably say around the same answer it was just it was the it was the grunge that just kind of made it all happen i think mm -hmm. it was just perfect mm -hmm. did this uh this this did this sound change the way that you write lyrics um do you think about it differently i do i absolutely do um because i think that um there is less focus on the personal mm. and more focus on the universal um, now with my lyrics. And I think that that is probably a result of of being so heavily influenced by 90s music where yeah. that, that perspective seemed to be the one in charge. Like, why are we all here? Why are we all, you know, what are we all doing? You know, as opposed to like, what am I doing? Why am I here? You know, I just feel like it kind of, um, my my writing had gotten very personal and very like, you know, almost too inside baseball. Or it's like if mm. you don't know exactly what I'm talking about, you can't even relate to it. So yeah. this th these lyrics, I just want I want people to be able to relate to. During this process of collaborating together, it sounds like everything just happened organically and naturally. But what kind of challenges did you guys feel like you faced like in the studio? Whether it was like the writing session, the recording session, or even just like now that you guys are performing these songs. You go. Um. I think the oddly enough, like I didn't the things that I thought would be happening, like, oh, we, we couldn't find a melody or yeah. we couldn't do this. It didn't really happen. Um, that all kind of just went very smoothly. Um, it's like it kind of <sighs> kind of weirded me out. <laughs> it didn't it didn't all the stuff that I assumed like, oh, we're not going to like this or we're not going to like that. And we are we had the same kind of sensibilities and then live. Um, you know, it's just getting used to kind of like where one of us is going to be on stage so we don't yeah. knock our teeth out. But um, <laughs> it's I, I, mean, I, I personally didn't feel any of that in the studio. No, I same thing. It was never really um, I didn't really run into any creative obstacles. I think I, I do think my only concern is that it was going so smoothly that I was only, I was one tracking things. And then I was like, okay, okay, if this is gonna be <laughs> punk rock and this is gonna be punk rock, we'll one track it. Yeah. But the fact that I one tracked it meant that in my head, since then, I've always been like, 
was was that just a lucky day? Like, were those just lucky takes? Was that, a, you know, like a one trick pony thing? <laughs> Am I going to be able to do that live? So then the rehearsals for the tour happened and I was like, OK, I can actually pull this off, you know, so it started making me feel better. <laughs> but for a long time, I was like, I don't even know if I can do any of that live, but I manage. Now that you are giving us both the the hardcore like screaming that you normally do, and then as well as like the the melodic singing, mm. um, how do you differ? How do you bounce from one and and the other like when you're performing performing it live? Um, absurdly, like <laughs> daringly, <laughs> like I I dare myself to do it. Like I'm always like, can I go right from the scream into this note? And I I don't know. I just try it, and then it works sometimes. Then I have like this weird little courage, and I'm like, yeah, pep in my step. And then I just can get through the rest of the notes. You know, I don't know. I make it fun. I make it fun for myself up there. Um, but yeah, I I just I I don't know how I can do it, but it, it probably has a lot to do with the vocal warm ups and things that I've been doing over the yeah. years. So, yeah. What excites you guys most about this upcoming debut album? Um, <clears throat> what excites me most is the the potential for more mm -hmm. because when everybody hears the album and then we our goal for this album was to just go farther than we have before yeah so the idea of what's farther than this now now that it exists and you know i was making jokes with him like i want to write like the heaviest song that like the head like the grimiest heaviest song that i've ever written that you've ever written and then like have a a song with just an acoustic guitar like at that point like we're the sky's the limit yeah. you know so that my i my my thing that i'm most excited about is the potential and just understanding of we're not just going to be like a pop band or a heavy band or you know like you know we're not just going to be able to tour with thursday we yeah. can go tour with lamb of god if we wanted to but we don't have to we could tour with anybody mm -hmm. Which I that's like. that's so that's so amazing that like after the experiences the career that you guys have had like again going back to what I said earlier there's like absolutely no pressure right and I feel like it just makes the writing process the whole experience just like a kid again like yeah. back when you were 15 yeah starting this project or whatever like and you know from watching what happens to bands that this is the magic hour yes this is the this is the point in time when every band. 15 years from now goes oh i just wish it was like it used to they're talking about right now you know <laughs> so you really want to kind of embrace that and just make sure that you know you know you, you stay present with it and you're kind of true to yourself and yeah doing what you do yeah now for me personally uh no love lost because there's no love left was an incredible lyric thank you very much it stuck out immediately thank you for you guys what was the favorite lyric that you guys have had so far on these three tracks that you've released um i didn't I'm never, ever, ever one to like be like pat myself on the back for a lyric that yeah. I write. But one of the lyrics that has gotten the most appreciation from friends is um, I stuck the landing on a leap of faith. That, yes, that's the one that that's people have sent one. me been like, this is a really great line. I've just been like, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> my my personal favorite is um, everything happens and everything must. Yes, because I. Um, I've, uh, you know, I've been a fan of, of, of yours, um, many, many years. And I was like, he's like the modern, like a punk rock David Byrne. <laughs> and then like, I hear everything happens, everything must. And I'm just like, oh my God, like it's, it's happening on a song I wrote. Like what the <laughs> is going on right now? And, uh, it was just like, that's my, I think that's my favorite line so far. That might be my favorite line in the whole record just cause yeah. it just, yeah. It's just so it's like precise and vague at the exact same time. And it's yeah. perfect. And that's what I love about it, that it's that it's not direct. Like you kind of mm. have to like, under, like, as you mentioned earlier, you kind of have to understand what's going on or like mm. what you're talking about to really feel it. Yeah. So it's like I kind of like the fact that you give us this, you hit us with this punch. And then but at the same time, it's like, what hit me? <laughs> <laughs> what was that? <laughs> so that's incredible. I'm excited Thanks. for more Thanks, music man. with you guys. Thank um, you. The debut album, I hope, is just around the corner. Uh, we hope so too. And you know, hopefully, you know, we'll reunite it's again. It's ready to go. Yeah. Yes, please. Yeah, please, we'll reunite please. for with, sure. With this tour that's going on right now, you guys have had a few dates already. Mm -hmm. Um, what has that experience been like, that vibe been like with the, with this new audience? Uh, it's a dream come true. Uh, it's a whole new energy. It's something I've I've honestly never experience before um with the vibe of of the rooms and the people that are on tour it's just everyone is so positive i've never seen anything like it you know <laughs> there's just no there's no there's yeah. nobody's nobody's hurt nobody's hurting it's just it's wonderful i love it
Uh, yeah. Um, I think my favorite part is to like the first time we've ever done something is we're going out with Thursday and rival schools yeah. and like, um, I mean, one of the reasons I play like hardcore music is because of Walter from rival schools. Cause he was in quicksand and gorilla biscuits and probably 17 other bands that we don't even know. And, <laughs> <clears throat> um, so when it's like, yeah, the first tour you're going to do is kind of the reason you want to play this music where it's not exactly metal and it's yeah. not exactly grunge and it's not exactly hardcore. It, the, he's going to be on the tour is pretty freaking rad. Damn. You know, full circle yeah. moment. For sure. That's cool. Yeah. Well, guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me. Thank you, man. You guys enjoy the rest of this tour. You guys be sure to check out Many Eyes. The three songs are out now, and thanks for watching here on Front Row Live. God bless.